What's up everyone? April Dunham here. In this video, I wanted to talk about something that I haven't really covered that much yet, and that's Microsoft Forms. Forms is a great tool to use if you have a simple input form type need. So think event registrations, surveys, a contact us form, and even quizzes. Now, if you worked with Microsoft Forms before, you know it's really simple to use and get set up. But the only way that you can really see the results of the submissions in Microsoft Forms is to go into the Forms portal or to export to Excel. So I wanted to create a video to show how you can leverage Power Automate to export your Microsoft Forms data into Microsoft List. Now I'm going to be showing how to do this in a Microsoft List, but this same concept would apply if you want to export your data to SQL Server or whatever data source that you need. By taking that data outside of Microsoft Forms and putting it into something, say, like Microsoft List, that really opens up the doors to be able to more easily access the information amongst your team members and collaborate and report off of it. I'll walk you through how this is done coming up. To get to forms, you're going to go to forms.office.com or use your waffle and go to the forms icon. First screen you'll see is the My Forms screen, so any forms that you've created will show up here. The Shared With Me tab will show forms that have been shared with you from another person. And Group Forms is if you've created a form tied to an Office 365 group. When you see the different forms you created, you're able to see on the card the number of responses that you have for a given form. So take this event registration form I've created. This is a perfect use case for forms. You just need to collect a little bit of information like first name, last name, email, job title, and a question. And creating these forms is very simple. You have add new and we have a few different options of types of controls we can have. So we can have choice, text, rating, dates, Likerts, net promoter scores, and even file uploads if you're using this within your internal organization and not external users. But back to the problem at hand here is how do we get the responses and collaborate on that? So right here, if I want to see who's responded to this form, I can click on this responses tab and we get this summary of the top responses for each question. But we can click view results and we can see and, and click through all of the individual responses here. You have the ability to delete individual responses and print them. But this really isn't ideal for if we need to do anything off this data. So if we want to do any detailed reporting, like see how many people from a certain company or with a certain job title or registering for this event, we're kind of limited here. We can always open this in Excel. That is an option. So we can click the open in Excel button. That'll download that to your computer. So we can click that and open it up and take a look. And then we'll see an output of the results. The main problem with this is, although we could use the Excel to do some lightweight reporting, it's really hard to collaborate with the team on these results or do anything beyond that. So the ideal situation might be to put this in some other kind of system that your team has access to, say, for example, Microsoft List. To get the responses from Reform into something like Microsoft List, first step is obviously you need to create the list to hold the responses. So if you click on the waffle and select the Microsoft List option from the waffle, you'll see Microsoft List open up here. And if you need a primer on Microsoft List, I'll put a link in the video notes to my quick 10 minute intro to Microsoft List for Teams so you can get familiar with what List is, but essentially it's kind of SharePoint List reimagined. So from here, we can select new list and we'll do a new blank list. So we'll select the blank list option and I'll call this event registrations. So with List, you can choose colors for the tile, add descriptions and an icon. And then we have the save to option. So when you're working with list, it's important to choose where to save this to. The default's my list. So that's actually going to store this list in your personal OneDrive. But if you're wanting to share this with your team, you'll want to select the drop down and select the SharePoint site that you want this to be created under. So I might be using this for a special webinar that the IT team is putting on. So I'll store this in the IT site and then click create. Now this will take us to the screen where we can set up and configure our list. So what I'll do in this case, I want to recreate and make sure that I have fields for every field in my Microsoft form. So I might repurpose this title field and have that store the person's last name. 
So to do that, I can click on the drop down, go to column settings and select the rename option. And we'll rename that to last name. Now for the other columns, we'll just use this add column option and we need to select the type of column this should be. And if we look at our Microsoft form, everything that we have here is just single line of text fields with the exception of this last one of what you're hoping to get from the event. And that's a multi line of text field. So we'll just go through. We'll add a new single line of text column. I'll call this first name. We'll create another single line of text column for email address, another for job title. And we'll do a multi line of text field for what do you want to get out of this event. So now that we've created a list in Microsoft list that matches our form, now we can leverage and pull in Power Automate to help us take the values from the Microsoft Forms results into this list. So to do that, let's go to our waffle and open Power Automate. And now in this case, I've already created this event registration form and people have been actively using it. Now, ideally, before you would go and put this Microsoft form out in production for people to use, you would have a process in place to take those responses and put them into your Microsoft list. And to do that is really easy because there's actually a template. So if we go to Power Automate and click on this templates tab, one of the first templates you'll see on this list is this record form responses in SharePoint. So this is going to do all of the hard work for us. So we can actually select this template. And I love Power Automate templates because they're an easy way to get started. This is going to connect to Microsoft Forms and a SharePoint list. And you're not going to see Microsoft list listed here. There's not a Microsoft list connector yet. I'm not sure if there will be um, because Microsoft list are just SharePoint list. So it'll be the SharePoint connector that you're using for this. So it's going to connect to those two services. So you'll just click continue here. And this template will have everything you need in it. And all you have to do is fill in the blanks. So our trigger is when a new response is submitted. So every time someone submits something to your form, this flow will get triggered. All we need to do here is click the drop down and select our form from the list. The form I want is this event registration. Now you see we have an apply to each. So we need to loop through the list of responses and get the details of that response. So that's what this action is doing, this get response details. And again, all we need to do here is click on the drop down and point that to the form that we want to get the details from. And finally, we have one action to create an item in your SharePoint list, AKA Microsoft list. For this action, we'll use the drop down to select the site address where the list is. And if you recall, we created that in our IT site. So we'll select that. And then we just need to select the list name. So this will filter this next drop down with the lists that are currently in this IT site. And we'll select our event registrations list that we just created. And once we do that, it's going to update this action for create item to show all of the fields that we have in that list. Now, one thing I will point out on that title field, you notice that even though in our Microsoft list, we rename that to last name, that doesn't translate an update within Power Automate. So you'll have to be aware of that if you're hunting down in this list for a last name field and you don't see it, be aware that whatever you change the title field to doesn't get carried over within Power Automate. So now it's just a matter of clicking in on the individual fields and using our dynamic content window, which will allow us to get values from previous actions like this get response details and map them to these corresponding fields in our Microsoft list. So for this one, that's last name. So I'm going to select the last name option and I'll just go down the list and select all of the dynamic properties from our form. And that's it. We click save and you probably want to make sure that you give this a relevant name. So here, this is going to be the name of your flow, but we can click on that and change that and give it a more relevant name. So just type that and click enter and save. And once we save this, this is live and ready. So if I go into my form as a user who's submitting to this, I can type in a name. Let's see. So Steve Rogers wants to go to our event. And this is a Power Platform event we're putting on. So he wants to know, how can I use the Power Platform to defeat Thanos? I'll submit that. Now at this point, our flow in Power Automate should kick off and register that response and write it out here to our Microsoft list. 
So I'll just do a refresh of the list, and there you go. Almost instantaneously in that case, it mapped all the properties, our last name, first name, email, job title, and that response of what do you want to get out of this event. So that's the really simple part. Now back to the issue where we're already using this right now and we already have seven responses. How do we get these seven responses into our fancy new Microsoft list? Well, for that, we can leverage another flow. So we have our flow that's going to run every time one's added. But now if we go back to my flows, we can add a new flow that will be a one time flow that we're going to run to take that data that's in there right now and add it into this list. So to do kind of a one time automated flow like that, we can use something called an instant flow. So if we select the instant option from the new dropdown, we'll see an option for manually trigger a flow. So we want to select that and click create. And now what we're going to do is we're going to leverage the fact that forms allows us to export these results in Excel. So earlier, we already downloaded that Excel file that has the results. Now, the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my OneDrive and I'm going to upload that Excel file that we just downloaded of our responses into my personal OneDrive temporarily. So I'm going to select upload, point to the event registration. Now we have that here because I'm going to, with Power Automate, go through this Excel file and automatically add all those to my list. So that's the end goal. Now that I have it in OneDrive where Power Automate can get to it, I'm going to add a new step and search for Excel. With Excel, one thing to watch out for is there's two different Excel connectors. There's an Excel Online Business and Excel Online OneDrive. If you're using a personal OneDrive and that's where you uploaded this file to, you'll use this Excel Online OneDrive. But in my case, I'm logged into Office 365, so I'm leveraging the Excel Online Business. So that's the one I want to use. So what we're trying to do here is take all the values from this Excel file, loop through them in Power Automate and add them to our list. In order for this to work with inside Power Automate though, the values in your Excel sheet that you're wanting to loop through need to be in a table in Excel. Now, thankfully, Forms already does this for us and outputs the values in a table. So when I click on this, we can see the table tab is highlighted and it's output of these results in a table called table one. So back in Power Automate then, within our Excel Online Business Connector, there's an action that we can insert called list rows present in a table. So this is going to go through and we can bind that to our worksheet and that table and it's gonna list all of the rows. So again, all we have to do here is fill in the blank. So for the location, we can click the drop down, and from the list of options, we can select OneDrive for Business. In the next drop down for Document Library, we can click that and select the OneDrive option. And then for the file, we can select this folder icon, and this is going to show all of the Excel files that we have in our OneDrive. So we can select our event registration one that we just downloaded. And finally, it's going to look at that Excel file and list in a dropdown all of the tables that are included in there. So in our case, there's just one called table one. So that's it for this action. This is going to list our rows, but now that we have the rows, we need to loop through those rows so that we can add them as items in our list. So to do that looping, we're going to add a new step and do a search for apply. There's an action that we want called apply to each. This allows us to do a loop within Power Automate. So this particular action you see just has one input. So if we click in that input box, we can pull information from this list rows present in a table action before it. And we can select the value list of items option. So this will loop through each value of the rows in there. And now the last thing we have to do here is within this apply to each action, we're going to add an action and do a search for create item. And the first thing that should pop up is SharePoint. So we want this SharePoint create item action and we'll point that to where our Microsoft list is stored. So for the site address, we'll select our IT site. And for the list name, we'll select that event registrations list. And again, when we do that, just like before, it's going to populate with a list of columns in there. And we just use our dynamic content window again to do this mapping. So it's gonna look a little bit different than coming from the form versus coming from this Excel. So now we're gonna leverage this list rows present in a table action and map the fields from there. So for a title, we'll map that to last name, first name, we'll map that to first name, and so on and so forth. 
Okay, that's it. So moment of truth. What we're gonna do is we're gonna save this. And this particular flow can only be kicked off manually. And we can actually do that straight here from the editor. There's a test button. So if we select that, this will run a test of this. And we can select the all perform the trigger action option and then save and test. So this is going to perform all of the actions that we have in here. It's just gonna sign in to the connectors. And once it's authenticated, we can click continue and this is gonna run. It should loop through all of the rows present in our Excel spreadsheet and add them as items in our Microsoft list. And look how quick that was, pretty fast. It ran successfully. So now if we go back to our Microsoft list, there you go. See, it's taken all of those values from our spreadsheet and added them in there. So don't fear if you've decided you wanted to automate your Microsoft forms and add them into Microsoft list, but you've already have a form with a ton of data in it. You can get around that and use the method that I just showed to dump that into your Microsoft list. And now we're able to take full advantage of the capabilities that Microsoft list provides us. If you found this helpful, please like subscribe, share, and I'll catch you in the next video.